they they thought the separation of function by cos one and cos two means that they can actually design selective cox two inhibitor. This one is on the chemical force of the cox two inhibitors. The framework of COX-2 inhibitors hinges upon a triangular framework. So at the edge of the triangle, at the tip of the tip of the triangle, you have um, let me just label it as A, for example, in for this uh, for this instance, yeah, and two Bs. So at A is can be can be linked to a hydrophobic substituent heteroatoms. It can A can be heteroatoms, heterocycles, fused ring system, can be a phenol ring, can be uh, saturated carbocycles, it can be unsaturated carbocycles. B can be further linked to hydrophobic substituent and further linked to um, saponamides, yeah? moieties. So that's essentially the this this is essentially the um, essence of. Cox two inhibitors. So, example two example I can actually show you is salicoxib and rafikoxib. So you can see that the amoity in this case is a heterocycle, and that the two phenol B is a two phenol rings. Okay, uh, in this case is only one. Um, Sulfone moiety in this in the in the example in the um, salicoxib there's sulfo sulfonamides okay um, what uh, so in this what I want to point out here is that the oxidation states for sulfur is important for selectivity towards COX two enzyme yeah sulfoxides and sulfites are not uh, does uh, do not actually help in enhancing the activity. Okay. So methyl sulfonyl group, in this case, and sulfonamide is quite good for the uh, for the activity for COX two uh, inhibitors. Now you have seen the model of COX two inhibition. Yeah, D. If you remember D triangle okay so this is very important and now how can these for example these functionalities at the tip of the triangle how could this interact with the binding site of cox 2 enzyme okay let's take a look so here there are a number of binding regions in the COX-2. Uh, this has been studied and now they can identify the binding sites. And in the next few minutes, we're going to look at the interactions. So here they have identified that on the binding site, there are these, there's the double bond region here on the 11th position, on the 8th position, on the 14th. I think this corresponds to the arachidonic acid structure and also at the fifth position as well. Right, there's also this extra binding pocket in the COX-2 enzyme and this extra binding pocket, you see later, is hydrophilic. Yeah? And also this amino acid arginine-499, tyrosine-371 and uh, arginine-106 are important in interacting with um, a COX-2 inhibitor. Alright, let's have a look at um, two different compounds. I'm going to take 
silicon sieve here. This is a silicon sieve you have seen earlier. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just drag this silicon sieve over to the binding site in the COX-2 enzyme. Yep. Okay. Let's put the rings into the different sides. All right. Let's zoom in. And now you can see that this part of the molecule, this pyrazole, is basically matching or interacting with the double bond binding region. This is important. Okay. And this CF3 is actually... Um, would promote hydrophobic interaction and it would definitely uh, interact at this region which I think on the other side would have a uh, hydrophobic amino acid as well in addition to tyrosine 371 I think there are more here okay and then let's have a look at this part of the molecule you have CCH3 and here you can see that they're not that um, I would say properly um, you know, match or bind in or interact that well. And you see in other analogs of COX-2, this part of the molecule are not that um, important as compared to, let's go to this side of telecopsy, whereby this part of the um, aromatic ring is extremely important when it actually bind with the uh, 14 position in the double bond binding region. Okay, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, this sulfonamide is again essential uh, because if you see sulfonamide is quite hydrophilic and there's this also this extra binding pocket in COX-2 which is also hydrophilic. So that gives uh, the selectivity of this compound Telecoxib in inhibiting the COX-2 enzyme. Okay, now I'm going to drag this molecule over back to the bottom and let's take a second compound. The second compound, if you see, in terms of the pattern, yeah, I'm talking about the pattern again. If you remember my video, if you want to study medicinal chemistry, you try to study the patterns. Uh, the patterns means the structure. Uh, so in here, if you look at the patterns, I'm going to take one of the marker highlighter. As I mentioned earlier in the video, the patterns is this one is a triangle. Okay. On the contrary, the pattern here, in the case of this fictitious analog of silicoxib, it has all the silicoxib. Uh, functionality okay uh, so but here you can see that it has a bigger triangle so this look like a slanted a slanted triangle okay so let's undo that and I'm gonna pick the so this in terms of the shape this would be quite different and I think Let's just bring it over there and position the uh, pyrazol ring over on the um, 11th position of the double bond binding region. And you can see that now what happens, let me zoom in into here. Okay. So in terms of bond interaction, okay, the, uh, let's just take one of the highlighters. So this is fine. All right, the pyrazol ring, if we use that to anchor our um, analog, this fictitious analog over in the binding side of COX-2 enzyme, this is okay, it matches, it would interact with this 11 uh, position, double bond binding region. And the CF3 is fine, it would interact uh, hydrophobically with the hydrophobic region in the COX-2 uh, enzyme. However, the one that we really want first would be this one, the aromatic ring. Yeah, this does not match. Yeah, that's going to be a problem in terms of it will affect the activity. And secondly, yeah, the uh, sulfonamide here, 
would not interact with the extra binding pocket in COX-2 enzymes. So this wouldn't happen. So when two of the important functionality do not interact with the binding sites in the COX-2 uh, enzyme pocket, so that will actually affect the activity. The activity will drop. It will definitely drop a lot, yeah, quite a lot actually. So when this part of the molecule hardly interact with the binding site, therefore what you uh, you would actually get is a drop in activity. Okay. Any analog or compounds, derivatives that don't match and able to interact with the binding site in COX-2 or even in any any other uh, enzyme or receptor interaction, you see a drop in activity or poor activity. So therefore, this molecule, okay, this this molecule has a poor anti-inflammatory or painkiller action compared to uh, salicylic here. All right. So the main thing you need to remember, yeah, the main thing you need to remember is that salicylic has, you have to have, you have to have that triangle. Yeah. And one part of the triangle has to have the saponamide. Uh, it has got to be hydrophobic here. It's got to have this aromatic ring here. And also, again, the pyrazole, pyrazole is important. And also, the CF3 is important. But you do see some derivatives without, without the uh, CF3 or without the CH3. And, and also, uh, there are also modification, uh, different rings or heterocycles are being used in place of pyrazole. But most will keep this intact. Okay. A quick comparison between these two uh, different compounds, salicylic and also the uh, fictitious analog of salicylic uh, One thing to make the point that for a COX-2 inhibitor, they've got to uh, match or interact with the different regions in the um, COX-2 enzymes in order for it to give a really good uh, inhibition yeah, and be also selective towards COX-2 um, enzyme. All right, so that's all. Thank you for watching and I see you in the next video.